Welcome back guys. Um, in the previous video, if you remember, we were seeing about some family relationships and just writing some functions that can query this family relationship and some of them can even do some logic abstraction that can retrieve some useful information from our space, from our atom space, which is not explicitly defined. Um, today in this video we'll be seeing about how we can integrate Python into Meta and how you, you can also uh, call Meta from a Python file so or from Python code. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to uh, revise is that in Meta whenever you call a function you're going to be using an, a prefix notation. So in other programming languages you're probably used to for example in Python if you have if you want to store a variable after executing some function, it will be something like this, right? You'll write the first argument, then the function, then the second argument. And if there is some kind of function call, or if there is a function that you want to actually run, or your own defined function, let's say sort, you'll call the function, you'll open a bracket, and you'll pass the variable. For example, you can pass list, and you can pass your key, for example, the compare function. So, this is how other programming languages work, but in Meta, we are always going to represent a function call using the same order. So the first will be always a function name. So, so far we've been seeing, for example, uh, you know that we call the is sibling function here. The first is the function name and the rest will be the function parameters. The same is with the, for the function is parent. The first is the function name, the rest is its parameters. So everything is within the bracket. It's not, if it was in Python, you would be defining a function, something like this, the function name, then the, you call, you open a bracket and you give it the parameters. But since it's meta, we are not even going to, going to be doing that. We're going to open the bracket first. We are going to proceed it with a exclamation mark and we're going to pass the rest of the argument. So if we want to do the sum of two fun two numbers, for example, you're going to write the plus function at the front and the first argument in the second argument. Same with the minus or subtraction. If you're subtracting, you're going to write the first argument to the, then the second argument. So when you read this, this is going to be read as the follows. We're basically trying to add one and two. So this reads as one plus two. And the same goes for this one. This reads as one minus two. So if there are some functions where order actually matters, this is the actual order that the function is going to be accepting the parameters. So all of this explanation is to get you guys started on how we can actually call a Python function. For example, in Meta, we don't have any uh, built-in functions for, for example, let's say the common Python library, the math library, the math library. So in the math library, there are like a lot of functions we are already used to, like the floor function, the seal function, power function, or something like that. Or there could be some other library, for example, it could be a NumPy library if you're doing some deep learning model or some kind of uh, data uh, optimization or that kind of things. You'll be needing to import some NumPy libraries or scikit libraries, different kind of libraries. So these libraries are pretty common and they're not actually present in Meta. So there we need a way to integrate them with Meta. So for that, you're going to use a new function called the PyAtom. So this tutorial is going to be, half of the tutorial is going to be about this function. So the PyAtom function lets you access any installed package in your local media. So in your local computer, if you have a, if a module in, if module named math, then you can access it like so. For example, if you want the function math, if you want the ceiling function from the math package, you're going to do math.seal. So this is basically trying to retrieve from the Python a function called seal. If you're going to write floor, it's going to retry and retrieve math.floor. So remember, this is the only order you can continue if you want to have, for example, a nested package import. For example, if you want to continue another dot here, you might need to refer the documentation. So here, only thing we are doing is one level import. 
So if there is a package called mat and if we want to import the floor function, we can use the pyatom to access the library first and then that single function. So this pyatom is basically saying that this function is going to be coming from the Python library. So the interpreter knows that it doesn't need to access the local files. It needs to go to the Python distribution. So that's basically it. So this whole thing is actually this whole thing is actually just a function name. It's going to be used as a single function name. So you have to call it like any other function and then pass it the argument like so. So for the other things, these brackets are going to be replaced by the function name when the function is defined within meta itself or if it's a built-in meta, a meta, meta function, you're going to write the function and then the arguments. But in our case, we don't have the function in meta. We have the function in Python. So what we're going to do is we open another bracket. We call a function called pyatom. We try to retrieve the floor function from the math library in the Python. So the math library is a pretty common library within the Python. So this is one example. Another example could be, let's say, if we want to import the random library. So meta doesn't also have a random generator. So if you if you say random dot rand int, then you might need to give it a range. So you can say, for example, from zero to ten. So these two are going to be the argument to the function run it. But in order to access the function, remember we're calling the Python function first. So this whole thing is another function which is going to return a function from the Python that we can use by passing these two arguments. So let's see the results now. Let me open my terminal and make sure our virtual environment is activated and run the meta file. As we expect, the first two lines are basically adding and subtracting like our expectation. Let me comment them out. And the first the third line here is basically trying doing what we wanted to do. It's basically rounding down. So if you want to do the same thing, but the opposite, if you want to use the function seal instead of field floor, that is going to be rounded up, which is four. Let me comment out the other functions as well so that they won't mess up our input, our output, sorry. Okay, so so what we're doing here is basically trying to import these functions from the Python, giving them the argument they need in order to run, and then calling them inside meta so we can use them in our meta code. So the last one is actually generating a random number three. You're seeing the result changing after one after, run after another. So if I try to run it again, it's actually nine now. Previously it was three, so it's working. It's generating random integer. So the first two numbers are basically just the same numbers given to floor and seal. The floor rounds down, the seal rounds up. So that's basically how you can integrate um, Python code into Meta. So you can, you can write pretty interesting function logic using these this, uh, kinds of Python function binding. So it's called a function binding because you can, you can assign it to certain function names if you want to. We're not giving the functions any names here. We're just trying to retrieve them from the Python library by calling the pyatom function. And again, if you want to know more information about this, you can still find it in the documentation. Okay, so now let's move on to the part where we need to import a meta code inside a Python code and run it from there. So for that, we need to create a new Python file. Let's call it query.py file. Okay, let me go back here and comment this out since we don't need them anymore for now. Okay, so for that, what we need to do is import the Hyperom package that we installed before. So from the Hyperom package we installed before, we're going to import the meta class constructor. So after that, we need to instantiate an object using this constructor and then using the meta object, we can run any meta code. 
So for example, let's try to run the simple functions we created in our previous family file. Not created or try to run at least. So let's use the prefix rotation and try to add one and two. And let's try to print this so that we can see the output in our terminal. And now we're going to use Python to run our Python file and see the, the meta output. So it's outputting three, which is the correct output we are expecting. So we are running this meta code inside the Python using the meta, the, using the meta object. So similarly, you can use this kind of logic to, to store information in this meta object. For example, we can use the same syntax we've been using so far to represent, for example, our people or the relations of people. So we can, we can say Joe is a parent of Adam. And we can do the same thing. Pam is a parent of Adam. So now if we try to run a query using the match function, if you remember, we can say match. The function name comes first and add self, which would be the space, the spells, the default space that we are storing everything we are giving. If you don't instantiate any space manually, all, everything you write in a file is going to be stored in the space called self. That's why we are saying ampersand self. So we're trying to retrieve every parent of Adam. So remember, this is we are giving it a pattern. Retrieve me everything that can satisfy this pattern. The pattern is the dollar $x. So if parent is fixed, if Adam is fixed, any data entry that satisfies this pattern is going to be returned. So dollar $x is not given explicitly. So what the meta interpreter tries to do is it tries to match us every data entry that can be plugged here in order to satisfy this data entry. So in our case, if we can see it manually, then we can replace $x with Joe or with Pam. But let's try to insert another entry which doesn't make, which doesn't satisfy this entry. For example, let's say Alex is a parent of Pam. So we should see in our output only Joe and Pam after matching this, uh, this query, this space. So remember after giving it a pattern, we also need to return from the match. What is the expected return we want from this match function? So after matching this pattern, we want to only retrieve the $x. So we want to only see the values that can be plugged in here to in order to satisfy the pattern. So let's run the code and see the output. And as expected, we're seeing Joe and Pam. So let's change this Adam into Pam. And now it's going to only retrieve one element, which is going to be Alex. That's the only one who can satisfy this pattern. If we can, if we want to retrieve everything, we can change this to Y, and we can only print Xs that satisfy this relationship. So basically, we're trying to say anything that matches this relationship that can be plugged in into dollar $x and dollar $y. So to put it in English terms, we're basically saying. I want you to retrieve every parent of any child. So this is this is declared by the pattern is parent of. So we're re we're returning the dollar x which are the parents. But if we want to return the children instead, we can just use y, which actually could be interpreted as every just give me return every child who has a parent. You can interpret it like that and return the child here. So we're getting two, three children here, Adam, Pam, Adam. That's because we have two Adam entries, one for Joe and one for Pam. And those, both of them satisfy the, the pattern we're trying to retrieve. So uh, if it's possible to input our own Adam, then that means it's also possible to try and import our meta file into this meta object. So one way we can do that is open the file that we've been writing our previous data in, which is named the family.meta. If you remember, there are a few data entries we've put in here. We've also put some function definitions and we can see how we can access those from the Python file. So we can basically say with, we can open the file, the file family.meta. Let's rename it as file and try 
to run this or store this in the meta file in the meta object so we read everything in the file and store it in the meta in the meta object now after running this what we're going to do is try to call our function definition that is inside our previous meta file if you remember this function that is sibling function it takes uh, we can call the function by using the exclamation mark open bracket and the function name sibling then is Adam the sibling of Pam so we can then print the output and let's see how it goes empty so if you remember from our previous video we said that this function returns empty when Adam is not a sibling of Pam but if we change this into Monica if you remember Adam and Monica are siblings so should return true for both of the cases so we can also try to match only for the parents from our from our meta code using the match function itself so if you remember we can just call the function match give it the space at self and give it the pattern dollar x is parent of dollar y which basically trying to retrieve every parent and we want to return dollar x because what that's what we want and we can also print the parents in addition to those siblings and if you see here we have two parents both of them are palm and joe but they are duplicated here because they have two entries one for adam one for joe i mean one for monica so if you see joe is inserted inserted into the space twice as a parent one for monica one for adam so if we want to remove this duplicate we can use a function called unique and pass the match function query result to it sorry i think there is a typo here yeah that should do it yep so here as you can see the duplicate pam and joe is now removed and only a single entry of pam and joe is present so that's it guys this is how you can run meta file within python and also how you can run or integrate a python function into a meta file so that's it for this video thank you for your attention